Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about Pedro Paramo by the Mexican author Juan Rolfo. It's the most famous novel in Mexico and possibly the best novel from Latin America. First let me tell you, I love this novel. It's the shortest yet the sharpest and crispiest novel I've read. In this video I'm going to tell you about the author, summarize the novel and tell you why this is the most haunting novel from Mexico. This novel has apparently started the magic realism revolution in Latin American literature and inspired Gabriel Garcia Marquez to write 100 Years of Solitude, the most famous novel we know, which I discussed and reviewed in my last video. Stick around as I will reveal another two novels which I think are somewhat similar to this novel. Before we go any further, let me tell you a little bit about the country where this novel takes place. So it's very important because the novel and the country cannot be separated. Mexico or Mexico gets its name from Mexico City and it in turn gets it from the Aztec god of war called Mextili. Please let me know if that's the correct pronunciation. A country of 130 million people, the same as Japan, it's the largest Spanish-speaking country and the second largest Catholic population after Brazil. Therefore, Catholicism does make appearances in the novel. In the novel, there's a lot of talk about sin, purgatory and other Catholic stuff. Mexico celebrates the Day of the Dead as a national holiday, which is very relevant to this novel, as we will see later. Interestingly, Mexico City has 151 museums where they keep things left behind by dead people. Again, a theme that is prominent in this story. Mexico is also the world's largest beer exporter. Not sure in 2020 they saw a rise or fall in Corona export. Now let me tell you about the author. Juan Rolfo was born in 1918 and died in 1986. He was influenced by the American author William Faulkner. Unfortunately, I haven't read a single book by William Faulkner, so I don't know whether the writings are very similar. Please let me know in the comments section if there are any similarities between these two writers. He only wrote one novel. As you know, I love authors with one novel. Proust, Lermontov to name two. He was born at a tumultuous time in Mexico, with the revolution violence displacing his family and killing his father. He was raised by his grandma. His childhood was pretty rough, as many of his families were assassinated during the Mexican Revolution of 1910-1920 and the War of 1926-29 of government against the Catholic militias. He witnessed destructions, ruins and the sense of doom and gloom that is reflected in this novel. Also, the place he grew up, San Gabriel, had declined and turned into a dry, dusty and inhospitable place, which is similar to the setting of this novel. Juan Rolfo dropped out of university and became an immigration officer. Unfortunately, he's not very well known in the Anglophone world. Now, to the novel. Pedro Paramo is published in 1955 in Spanish. It is a short novella, only 124 pages long. It tells the story of a boy, Juan Preciado, who after the death of his mother, Dolores Preciado, sets off to search for his father, Pedro Paramo, and confronts him for years of neglect for him and his mother. He arrives at the village of Comola with his companion, Abundio, another son of Pedro Paramo. It turns out that Comola is a ghost village where he meets a few people who are already dead. Through these dead people's fragmented accounts and voices, a picture of his father emerges as a corrupt, murderous, cruel man who takes other people's lands, money, wives and daughters. He sleeps with different women and fathers many children. With it, he learns about the tragic and violent end to the town and its people and a bit about his own origin. These are fragments of stories about man who ruled the town and its people and how he was consumed by the love of one woman, Susana San Juan. When she dies, he dies soon after and the whole town is consumed in revolutionary violence and slow destruction into dust. The novel has no chapters or clear markers of who is talking. It's like you are in this desert graveyard with a microphone in the shape of a tumbleweed that lends itself to different characters and they start speaking. There is a moderator but he falls asleep from time to time. Characters appear and then fade out. The narrative too shifts from first person to the third person and back again. Also between past and present. It appears fragmentary and disjointed and without a clear structure and that is the genius of this novel. Now let me tell you why. But first, what is this about? I think the central theme of this novel is death. All the characters appear to be normal, except that they are not. They are all dead people. Despite being ghosts, they still fear other ghosts. Just like us, afraid of ghosts. At one point, someone says that even among the dead, he finds himself a stranger. So not all dead people are alike. Even the narrator at times appear to be dead, at times alive. 
It's like people who stay in their graves for some time and then decide to return to collect their rent or debt and then linger for a while and go back to bed, back to their grave and sleep for many more years. Occasionally, the dead and the neighboring graves listen to one another and comment on each other's voices, just like a normal neighborhood where people stop and chat. Komala is an arid, inhospitable place with lots of rocks, and at the end, when Pedro Paramo dies, he crumbles like a pile of stone or dirt, or like a building that caves in. It's a story of doom, resignation of its characters, end of the world, an apocalyptic scene where only dead people have their voices or stories, nothing else. It's also a place where the living can freely meet the dead and vice versa. Another theme of this novel is time. This novel inspired 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez, which I talked in another video. You can see that Marquez incorporated a few things from this novel. One is that when Marquez tells a story, he tells a story of somebody who is on the verge of death, and then the person remembers his childhood memories. A kind of before and after story. And also how the narrative jumps around and drifts here and then there. How life is so precarious and unstable. How he infuses the dead with the living and how the town of Komala resonates with Macondo. In this book you travel between life and death. The immense physical distance has shrunk in a few moments as the narrator moves from this home in Colima to his mother's hometown, Komala. Transition between past and present is so close, so near. Existence and then non-existence. One moment the town is there, lush green, the next moment it's ghost town and full of dust, where all the characters are dead people. It appears as though you hear voices of dead people from beneath a drought still stuck in the ground. A bygone time of lush green fields and water now turned into dust. And the contrast between the mother's memory of this beautiful place and the son's encounter of a complete ghost town. So it's a novel of before and after, life and death. The writing is really beautiful. Once in a while you read a book that grabs your attention and you really feel you're there. This is more powerful than cinema. Pedro Paramo's prose is hauntingly beautiful. It's the saddest novel I've ever read. It brings that feeling right up and overpowers you. The dead people and the deserted town ahead of them. Reading it feels like you are in the cemetery and you hear voices and fragments of conversation. And it's your job to piece the narrative together. It's an active reading and listening experience. It's the densest tale I have ever read and multi-layered. At some point you feel you're reading several stories at the same time. And often there's a feeling of deja vu as if you have read somewhere else. Stories crisscrossed and interwoven like a cemetery. You walk among the graves and you don't know who is who. They all blur. Sleep and death seems to mean the same thing. This ambivalence makes the novel full of mystery and mysticism. Words and sentences are more arranged than written, in a way that gives you a feeling and gets your imagination to do the work. It's a masterpiece of prose, craft and fiction. Despite all the dead people and ghosts, it's not really morbid or terrifying. It's weird, but it's probably the most engaging and somewhat enjoyable story you'll ever read about death. When I started reading it, I felt I had read it somewhere else. Then I realized I had read another novel, and they are pretty much alike in many ways. The Blind Owl by Sadiq Hidayat, which I spoke in another video, you can watch it here, it too has the same dreamy, poetic, and delirious narrative. Both feels like you are reading a book and then falling asleep, but the story gets infused with your dreams and nightmares, and then pushes the narrative onward. You're no longer aware of how much of it's on the pages and how much of it's in your imaginations or dreams. Coincidentally, the Blind Owls Spanish translation was first published in Mexico in 1966. Auguste Bartra translated it from the French. He was exiled in Mexico and spent some time in the 1940s where he found a magazine called Letters. And Rulfo also coincidentally had a journal called Pan. It's unlikely Rulfo had read The Blind Owl, but the similarity is pretty stark. The Blind Owl is a one man's narrative about death and dying. It was published in Persian in 1937 and Pedro Paramo 18 years later in 1955. Another book that reminded me was Makedo de Assis's novel Posthumous Memoirs of Brass Cubas, published in 1880, in which the narrator is a dead person. But that's more comic and less haunting than this. I reviewed that novel in a previous video. This novel reads like a nightmare or a spooky film made by ghosts, or a bunch of drunkards trying to tell a story of a man who died some years ago. 
At times, you might feel confused or lost. But I love that aspect of this novel, and some readers might not like that. One thing I didn't like about this novel was its Catholic overtone of soul, sin, purgatory, and prayers. But you cannot find a Latin American novel without some link with a Catholic view of the world, and it's a minor issue. The novel is almost perfect. This is the only novel I've finished and then started reading again. I'll read it again, I'm sure. It's a gem of a novel. The language is beautiful. I think the translation is exquisite, but some suggested that it's much better in Spanish. I read the translation by Margaret Sayers Pedan. She has done an amazing job. I guess no translation is the same as the original text. It's a novel that asks the reader to pay attention, fill in the gaps, and participate in the story. It doesn't treat you as a passive. It makes your imagination work harder. It feels as though you don't read this book. You feel it. You experience it. You meet and listen to ghosts. And at some point, you turn into a ghost yourself. Next week, I'll be in Chile to read a great book by a Chilean author. So tune in. Here's my question. Have you read this book? And what do you think about it? Or have I missed anything? Please let me know. If you like this video, please subscribe and share. If not, please tell me in the comment section. Even if you're a ghost, write your ghosty comments. I'm on a journey to read books and stories from every country on earth, so please make suggestions. Thank you.